Hey everybody, Bob McGoy here with Computer Aid Technology. Um, just wanted to go through a couple things on buoyancy of objects using SolidWorks. I'm going to go through a couple different techniques that you can use, um, some brute force ways of calculating um, your water line, your buoyancy center, your meta center of your, your product, and then we'll discuss a couple things here. So let me go ahead and let's just walk through this model here and we'll see what we've got. Um, I've got a small buoy that someone asked me to design up for them for a project and they want to understand where the water line is going to be, where the center of buoyancy is going to be, and where the meta center, basically the pivoting point of that object will be when it's in the water. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here I have a simple part file. Now this could be an assembly file, it really doesn't matter. So you can see um, if I do a section view here on this part, you can see it's actually hollowed out here. So you can see it's hollowed out. And I've got a material applied to it. It's a stainless steel. Now, what I want to do is go through buoyancy. Now, buoyancy basically states that the boat or the object floating has to displace an amount of water equal to its weight. So this volume that we have here, we need to convert that volume into a full watertight vessel that's filled with water. So let's go ahead and do that. We come over here and we go, and I added a configuration here. And what I did was I took out the, th the things that I used to hollow it out. I took out the shells. I, I modified the sweeps so there weren't hollow tubes, that sort of thing. So if I look at this now, you can see I have a fully solid model that is basically going to represent the water that this would displace if I pulled it completely underneath the water. And that's what we want. So the first few things we need to do is if we want to take this a step further and go into assemblies, we want to have the mass as a configuration specific custom property so we can display that later. We also want the material as a configuration specific custom property for both the configuration of water and the configuration for whatever metals and steels you're using. So you can see here the total weight of my product is 1,110 um, pounds. And if I go for the water, it's 1,884 pounds. So if we were to pull this thing underwater, it would pop back up. So that's, that's good. But we want to know where it would pop back up to. So let's figure that out. So the first brute force method that you can use is actually showing the mass with a sensor. So I'm going to say add a sensor here. And I'm going to put an alert in here. We know that the mass of it is 1,100, about. I think if I go back in there and look at that configuration specific for the steel, we're at 1,110 pounds and a little bit of change. So I'm going to come back in, add a sensor for the mass of this complete thing, and I want to know when it is... Uh, less than or greater than, or close to, let's say just less than 1,150. So we're, that way we're getting in the ballpark. Looking at this from the front, I am gonna start cutting away this material and working my way from the top down. So we'll just kind of go somewhere in the middle there and We'll use a, just a standard extrude. We're going to say, go ahead and go through all in both directions. And that's going to lop it off. And if we expand the sensors here, you can see I'm still at about 18,000. 18, I mean, 1,800. So I'm going to turn on that sketch, show it. I'm going to use Instant 3D to start dragging this down. And we'll watch the sensor. 17, 15. Ah, the sensor just rang at me. You can see right there, I've gone below my 1,150. 
still below it. So I want to get up to about, that's pretty doggone close right there. So I'm at 1,109.99. That's pretty doggone close. So that is going to be where my water line is going to be my, my design. Now, if I want to know where the center of buoyancy in, in, I guess, in marine terms, we call that the B center of the boat, we will ask SOLIDWORKS to go to our reference geometry and enter a center of mass. That gives us the center of buoyancy. Now let's go back over to the other configuration with everything still turned on there. You can see the sensor's alerting because it's yelling, but that's okay. We'll ask it to do a reconfiguration there. We'll just update that sensor. It doesn't know what material it's looking at, so that's fine. Um, right here, we will look at the center of gravity. So the center of gravity here for the entire object is right at the top of that dome. If we switch back, the center of buoyancy is also right here. So that gives us an idea of where our water line is going to be, our center of mass for the complete design, but also the center of buoyancy, which we have here. So let's go ahead and stop for a minute and I'll show you another method that you can use to figure out buoyancy. A few moments later. Okay, so this next one is going to require SOLIDWORKS simulation professional because what we're going to do is a design study. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to select a new study. And the type of study that we are going to do is a design study. Hit OK here. And it's going to ask for a couple things here. So we need to add a parameter in here. So I need to add a parameter to my sketch. So there's my parameter and I'm going to say cutting line. Give it a name. Get out of my sketch. And I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to select cutting line. Cutting, hit apply, hit OK. OK, so we're going to give it a range here. Let's see what kind of range we're looking at. So we'll say, let's say 10 to 90. So we'll give it a minimum of, say, 10, and we'll say a max. Yeah, let's dial it back a little bit, 18. And we'll ask for it to go in that range there. Just kind of figure it out. Our constraints here are mass, and we'd like for the mass to be between, let's say, 100... 1,100 and say 1,050. We'll give it a decent range there to work with at the initial part. And our goal, let's not do a goal for right now. Let's just tell it to do a range of steps and we'll say go in quarter increment steps there it's going to go 281 times and we'll say run yes that's fine and we'll let it do the brute force work for me and deliver when it hits that number a few moments later Okay, after a couple ticks here, you can see we got through all the scenarios. And you see we got a couple numbers here that are pretty doggone close. So I'd say right here we're right at, what, 65 inches from the top gives us about 1,084 pounds, which is pretty doggone close to the 1,110 pounds. 
so we're off by maybe 25 pounds or so so that that's that's another way of doing it um in the future if i come across how to do there's there's one thing i need to learn how to do in the simulation portion for the force because i don't want it to be a, a static force around the whole thing i want it to be a dynamic force i just need to find out how to do those calculations um once i do that i'll put together another video um so hopefully this helped out and i hope you enjoy it